Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and this week a new version of Orca Slicer dropped 2.1. So let's start taking a look. So this week, Orca Slicer 2.1 has dropped, and then immediately after, they also dropped 2.1.1 to address some immediate issues. I need to say that this version of Orca Slicer has some pretty cool features and bug fixes. So I thought we'd take a look at the release notes and then look at some of the features that I thought were pretty cool and give them a shot. Now, like most software, the way Orca Slicer works is the Orca Slicer team starts with a beta release, moves to a release candidate, and then an official release. So some features are introduced in the beta release, then some additional fixes and features are added in the release candidate. And then finally, there's the official release. So I'm going to start with taking a look at the beta and seeing what we have, and then we can move on to the official release. So starting with the beta, it should be noted that Orca Slicer now has some brand new icons that are pretty cool. Um, so it has a slightly different look. There's now support for directly downloading various models. Now I need to point out because this is buried down here, for right now this is a Windows only feature. Now I wanted to test this, but I'm currently running Orca Slicer on a Mac, so I won't be able to test this right now. One of the other interesting features is you can change the infill direction for both the sparse infill and the solid infill direction, and that way you can change those independently now. There's also a new infill pattern, and we'll test that momentarily. And this is a cross hatch, and this is supposed to be quick. So I guess if we'll try that, there's some improved seam performance. We'll see how that looks. And then lastly, support for some larger printers and some changes to the way overhangs are handled. And that's all on the beta release. Looking at the release candidate, there's some additional changes with adjusting of speed for slowing down on layers. And that's a big one for consistency on how that's handled for the outer layer and wall speeds. And we'll go ahead and test that and take a look at with the option on and off and see what the differences look like and see if that changes our print quality as well as our time. There's some navigational changes. And also now when you're doing the filament flow ratio, it now is showing the ratio and the flow at the bottom, so that's very handy. And like I said, there's numerous bug fixes. Now switching over to the official release, the big change here is improvements to fuzzy skin, which I don't use, so I will be testing that, and a bunch of UI tweaks. And then lastly, we have the hot fix here of 2.1.1, and that's just bug fixes. So let's go ahead and switch over and take a look at Orca Slicer itself. So I've loaded work slicer and then I've added a calibration cube. Now, right now, this calibration cube is at 200%. That way I could test some of these features and we can see things a little bit better. Also, when I test the infill, we can take a look and see how things are affected. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I want to look at there's a new feature called precise Z height. So let's look at the scale and I've turned off universal scale and I'm going to change the Z height to 40.1 millimeters. Without the feature precise Z height, this cube would probably print in the Z direction if I'm using a layer height over here of 0.2 as increments of 0.2, meaning that the final Z height would be 40.2. Now with the new precise Z height enabled, and I'm going to enable that, what will happen is on the final five layers, Orca Slicer will adjust that layer height dynamically so that the square should print as 
point as 40.1, so it'll actually print the true Z height I want. Now, let's just hit slice build plate. And right now it takes 54 minutes, 22 seconds. Let's go back, turn off precise Z height, and this takes, so it's a couple seconds extra. This takes 54 minutes, 17 seconds. So we're adding about six seconds to the print time. So not too bad. That precise Z height is probably something you want to enable to make your models get more exact. And it doesn't seem to really affect what's happening with time very much. Again, adding a couple seconds isn't too bad. I want to look at the new infill pattern. So I'm going to go over here, scroll down, and let me see if I can find it. So I'm going to do the cross hatch. Right now I have it at 20%, and let's slice the plate. So that's one hour and three minutes. And let's look at what that pattern looks like. And let me zoom in. That's pretty tight looking. And so that adds about six minutes. That, that is a little bit of a jump. I usually use myself adaptive cubic. So let's compare with that. And that actually makes it quicker to keep it as that adaptive cubic. And I've read adaptive cubic to me is fairly strong in all directions. So although the hatch pattern looks pretty cool, it is adding time. So I'm probably just going to stick with, for me, the adaptive cubic. So let's start looking at these other features. So the next feature I want to look at is the opt-out for outer wall adjusting speeds for cooling. So let's switch back over to Orca Slicer. If I go up here to my PLA settings, my filament settings, and click on cooling, I'll see this don't slow down for outer wall. Right now it's not checked. And when we slice the plate again, we're at 48 minutes, 12 seconds, or I'm sorry, 48 minutes, 13 seconds. Let's go over here and click that setting. Let's slice again doesn't change the time. So what we'll do is we'll test and see how that looks for both prints and see how that affects the look of our model. So what I'm going to do is test the precise Z height and see what that looks like. So I'm going to select my model. I'm going to hit clone and make two copies. This bottom model or the one closest to the front of the printer, I'm going to use that as my default. And so I'll go over here, click objects, and then I'm going to scroll down here and uncheck precise C height. So this model should wind up being 40.2. This model on the back. I'm going to weave it with precise Z height. That should wind up being 40.1. So we'll test that. Also, with both these models, I have left where I will leave on the don't slow down. And we'll see what that does for the outer walls. And then we'll try printing a cube with that feature turned off. And again, just compare the, the differences between the two, but I'll have to do another run with that because that's a PLA setting or a filament setting, and that's for every model on the plate. So let's slice our plate, and let's see what she looks like. So I've completed my print, and as you can see, these calibration cubes are big. I'm just looking at the quality here. Looks like I, I do have some ghosting here, so I'll probably need to mess with resonant compensation but I don't think I've tuned this printer now that I think about it. Looking, I don't see any seams, so that's good. A little bit of elephant foot here, but not a big deal. I'm actually pleased with this print. Everything looks good. Now this one, number one, is the one without the precise Z. So I've set my calipers at zero. And now I'm going to measure this. Now this should be around 40.2 millimeters. So let me go ahead and do the measurement. So I've done my measurement. As you can see, this is 40.2.6. I'm sorry, 40.26. So that's not exact. Now we're going to take my other cube, which has precise wall set. 
So the second one's coming up at about 40.11. You can see it does make a little bit of a difference. If I line these up, I can barely feel a difference here, but there is a difference. This one's slightly taller. And again, just with that slight measurement and I probably so for my last test I went ahead and turned off don't slow down for outer walls and let's just take a look at the results so in this block number two I have slow down on outer walls turned on this one number three the last one I printed I have it turned off the only thing I'm really seeing is there's a little bit of a imperfection right here on the one with it turned off Looking at the top layer and the bottom layer, maybe with it turned on, both those look better. I'm not really seeing any huge differences otherwise. So I think that's a setting I'm probably going to leave turned on. Again, seems to be some pretty neat improvements, some stuff I'm really liking. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Bye. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.